and then it's very simply secured. There's two wires on each corner. You know, the whole, everything you learn today, I, I really want it, but you're getting the, the beauty and the simplicity of it. Yeah. The time saving, you know, cut, cut the crap and just see what's needed to do and, and do it and don't listen to overcomplication. Keep, People set themselves up as teachers and then they have to complicate it to make it sound difficult and that elevates their position. Yeah. Who is helping you. A lot of teaching as a result is like that. It's it's just made to sound difficult. <coughs> so it's actually really simple. So these are not secured to the ground in any way. They're just four parts facing the ground, eight wires, job done. And then we've got three, so we fill the two outer ones and turn them into the middle one. So this one we finished filling about two months ago and started filling this one just under two months ago so that one's nearly full now and we're not going to fill this one because what we're going to do is turn that one into there right so the middle bay received first that one and then eventually we'll receive this one on top of it as well do you want to almost never okay i find that mine gets really dry and then most ants get into it but i do have one of those garlic compost bits so that might be there why is it dry though? You're not putting many fresh green leaves in I, I guess I think I would, I think because I have a, everything, all my kitchen scrap goes into a bin beforehand and then kind of sort of what? smushes down it. I think just because I'm a little bit lazy and I don't go to the end of the garden, I put it in this okay. bin outside the front. Yeah, but it's not drying out, is it? No, I suppose I'm not, so yeah, I'm not quite sure why. We, we find that, you know, you put on a cabbage leaf like that, that's, that's got a lot of moisture that's going to come mm. out in your heat. So sure green leaves, that's on the dry side, that's a cabbage stalk that we, we cut them lengthways, that's a nice way to split them open it, that exposes more surface area to the bacteria which can break it down more quickly. So we're, we're not putting any long pieces of woody material, okay. but if it's green stalks that doesn't matter exactly. And do you put lawn mowing on them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? Oh no, because I think that often raises the temperature. Exactly. <laughs> so if you haven't got lawn mowing. Yeah, it's okay. It's difficult to raise the temperature. Not necessarily. Mm. Not if you're putting, you know, again, any green, mm -hmm. uh, as long as it's not in two big pieces. We were cutting a lot of nettles last week, mm -hmm. but we did use um, a spade and shears, all sorts of things, just to cut, and cut them down to the smaller pieces. Yeah. Right. And then they break down more quickly. Right. Do you ever use a shredder? Yeah, we do have a shredder, actually. Um, mainly for woody material, not green. And just to accelerate. Yeah, just yeah. to make it possible to include things like all the woody prunings at this time of year, mm. like elder shoots and that kind of thing. It massively increases mm. the material available, which mm. gives you more heat and more compost. You, you don't cool. have to have heat to, to make compost, but if you do, obviously it goes more quickly. Mm. Mm. And what happens if your compost is in the trees? Do you get perfectly trees in our That's garden? great. Yeah. That's fine. It, do, it still gets... It's the heat is not coming from sunlight. It's, it's coming from... It's internal. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Totally. Charles? And what about sawdust? Would you use sawdust? Yeah, I mean, that green and brown in balance, so when you put any large amount of any material on your heat, just make it level. And that way it's easier to portion out the different oh, proportions. Yeah, That's the reason for levelling it off. Yeah. So say you put on, say you put on lawn mowings, for example, we wouldn't put on more than about that in one go, but make it level over the heat. Yeah. Then we put on, for example, a bit of sawdust, yeah. or scrumple that paper, bits of cardboard, woody prunings, if you just prune your roses, whatever it might be, that kind of thing. And all of that's good to balance the more green bits. Right. Mm -hmm. Green and brown. And what about citrus and onions? Because I really don't put citrus and onions in, Nonsense. but I put them in because I'd lose, so I yeah. just... Mm. No, who writes that? Good thought. Yeah. Honestly, you know? Ah, oh, I don't get it. <laughs> and what's your percentage of brown green? Well, if it's by volume, it's more green than brown because green looks more voluminous. Uh, if it was weight of dry matter, mm. it's probably close to 50-50, but in practical <coughs> terms, we're seeing it by volume, so it's probably about three quarters to a quarter, so the green will look more. Because mm. yeah. uh, brown can include things like soil, which are very yeah. dense. Mm. Yeah, soil is a good brown, if you've got no other brown. Mm. Otherwise, I'll show you some heaps of wood chip here, which <coughs> um, are good to, if you can get them delivered a bit in advance, and then they start to break down, that, that can make a, a suitable brand for putting in a composting, for example. When you, when you said that you turn these in, you said that you're going to turn the old one in below the new one? Yeah. No, 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 oh. sorry, that's an overcomplication. Right, sorry. Right. Basically what we do, the, the first one will turn here to fill this. Yeah. We'll, we'll do this heat, which finished two months ago. Yeah. We'll just take out these two wires, that yeah. open, swing this open, then you can get, fork it in front. Yeah. And then in about two months' time, this one will have... Do it's got for its first phase of decomposition. Yep. 
So it's probably this one that we put this on top. On top of the old one. So yeah. you go the old the oldest one at the bottom. Yeah. And but we'll use it all at the same time. Yeah. I'm using how they actually look yeah, quite similar to, towards the end. That to get some air in uh, the turning helps introduce new air, yeah. But it's a total myth that air flows into a compost heap from slatted sides. That's total nonsense. So it doesn't matter about having That's stuff. why we've got cardboard. We yeah. positively don't want that. We want to keep the warmth and moisture in and right up to the side yeah. as possible. At what stage, Charles, do um, the worm life come into the compost heap? Because obviously he's yeah. a lot of heat there initially, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Not at this stage. <laughs> no, of course. Um, but here, we could have a look at this one. Um, we, we found towards after about two months after we finish adding stuff, roughly. Okay. And then we st it starts to become like a wormery. And they disappear. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the beauty of worms, isn't it? The mm. eggs must be always in soil or whatever. Mm. Is there a heat that actually the worms stop going into the compost? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know what it might be. You mean the temperature? Mm. Yeah, you know, do they... When it gets so hot, they're not going to go in there. Yeah, they just, well, yeah, they're, they're just not there. Basically, it's yeah, too warm. They might be, might be gathering around the side. I don't know what their strategy is, but <laughs> they're, they're, they're waiting, <laughs> and they're they're going to run. So let's just have a quick look at this one. Yeah. So this compost. So we finished this two months ago, and this is what it's looking like. And when would you have started that? Ah, uh, this heap started. Let me see that one finished. March, roughly. Yeah, good month. Six months. Two months. Yeah. <laughs> this surprises me even. Yeah, that's a bit of soil. It's yeah, there's the worms. They, yeah. So they're they're coming now. Oh. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. It, the colour is interesting. The it's actually better slightly brown than jet black. Mm. That suggests more fungal activity. Uh, when you look at old wood, for example, old leaf mould, if it's made aerobically anyway, it shouldn't be too black. It's more brown. I mean, there's still, look, there's still in places bits of grass, mm. you know, that's the last lot of lawn moves. I think it's a bit dry under the carpet there, you know, there's a wardrobe. of them. So that's the advantage of turning, that will mix up yeah. some of this stuff. I mean, they're probably we're seeing, actually some of that's looking amazingly compost-like. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's, there's a lot of really good activity going on here. And I think the advantage of having these woody bits, like that mm. so that's probably from old wood chip it feels soft so it's it's on its way to degrading mm. porous and that's holding air in the heap a bit you know if you add this kind of wood to, to your lawn mowing that perfect balance stops it going soggy and airless what um, wouldn't you put in the compost well that's very simple to answer <laughs> Not much. Nothing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I might hesitate on Japanese knotweed. You could do some trials on that. I'll <laughs> <laughs> actually put the roots in the knot. I'll keep you posted if you, you know, I'd love to know, especially in a hot heap, I reckon it wouldn't survive actually, but it depends if it's heat yeah. or what. Mm. In a hot heap, you can certainly put anything. If, if it's cool, mm. I'd hesitate on weed seeds or any kind of seeds. Yeah. Too many. Yeah. Um, obviously, I've shown you how you can deal with that. If you do have weed seeds, don't, you know, don't be afraid of them. You can have like that. Potting. We'll sieve it and take out all that. But if I'm using this on the beds, I don't mind at all having those pieces left on top. Not in huge quantities. But it's all like that, right the way down. This was from the middle um, bay. So that's from two heaps going into one. Mm. And this was made last autumn and winter. So, this is my wormery. <laughs> well, I'm questioning a bit whether I need it, because you've seen that the compost as it matures, the, the worms arrive. Mm. Uh, but I got interested in the power of pure vermicast, worm cast excretions, for adding to propagating compost. And I'll, I've got on very well with more than gold propagation compost, but I'd like to be more high. <coughs> so this is the, what the worms excrete is going to be part of it. Have any of you seen um, snow worms? I'm sure some of you have. Yes, them. yes, a couple oh, okay. in Wales. Well, you're going to see some worms just for a while before they run for cover. Don't run. Oh, that's <laughs> oh. They are, they're over there, look. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And by you, you've got a couple of babies. Yeah. Mm. There's usually quite a few under there. 
Fantastic. So did you get the red wigglies in here? Or the tiger ones or just yeah, I actually bought some even just to speed it up. Mm. You're a legless lizard. I bought four yeah. kilos of uh, tiger worms, they're called, but they're basically the same. They see in your fetida, friendly. Red some are top feeders, isn't it? Was, uh, Cause you put food no, on top. No, well, yeah. I think bottom feeders, if you're talking bottom feeders, surely that's earthworm. Yeah. Yes. If you put food on there, the red wrigglers tend to bring it down more quicker, don't they? So they don't go all the way down. Is that correct? Or well, not my experience. I mean, uh, I'm finding they, they feed at the surface anyway, or seem mm. to. Um, it works really well putting, what I'm putting on there, what I'm feeding them is this, which is half finished compost, because you've had all the bacterial action doing the initial breakdown. It's then more efficient, you get a quicker result of worm food by giving them this rather than banana peel or onions or whatever it might be because they haven't got it they have not do that part of the degradation so if you just look down here a little bit you see loads of worms hopefully mm. and Super. you know not any worms but there's loads of baby worms as mm. well yeah you know, look at that just thousands yeah wow. so it's a lot of worm breeding going on the important thing is to keep it moist and just keep feeding them a little bit. So we put new, about every week I'm putting some new half decomposed compost. You don't have an overflow for the worm tea as regards you know, the... Well, there isn't any really. It's like, because in this method, pretty much this, this is soaking up the moisture yeah. and it's not being rained on. So you're using the castings, you're using the castings from you and adding them with is, your compost? Yeah. Because you had noticed on some of your videos you've done a little bit of a yeah, well, thing recently, the, haven't you? Those experiments have really helped me to see what's, what's needed. We're gonna, I'm, I've made a mix recently with probably one-fifth homemaker soil, Yeah. yeah. Uh, a bit more than a quarter homemade compost, a bit less than a quarter of this, worm compost, a bit of sieve wood chip, and that's proving really good for yeah, the yeah, rosy yeah. plants. I mean, are you adding anything to yours? You've got your wood chip. You're adding something, I'm guessing. Yeah, and just it's just um, it's just green waste basically, and 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 and, and using wood chip as a, as the browns. Wow. That's pretty <coughs> much it. And a little bit of cardboard now and again. Mm -hmm. Put out the brown. Right. Julia. Julia's just asking. Like, she bought some organic compost, and her seedlings have not flourished. She planted into it. Organic. The word organic applied to compost means nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid. Really? Unless it has the organic symbol, and it probably didn't, yeah. otherwise you'd have paid a lot of money. Mm -hmm. No, it's a real shark's um, dinner out there. Mm -hmm. They're not exactly ripping people off, but misleading people. Using that word organic, they're allowed to say it on compost. They're not allowed to use it for food. It's kind of odd. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah, it's totally separate. The second year, mm -hmm. the, um, growth the growth was okay. Yeah, well, that's the, the other thing that's going on. People are selling compost before it's ready. Yeah. You would be sold some yeah. compost like we saw in that first heap over there, which is still hot. Yeah. They chopped it in small pieces so it looks ready, yeah. but it's not. And so yeah. it was taking goodness to, for its own decomposition before your plants could get it. Oh you lost a few months. What about <laughs> manure, which has yeah, got weed killer in it? How do you know when you buy your manure? That's what <laughs> yeah. yeah. That is what it does. Yeah. So you can do a trial yourself, but you have to do it before you got it delivered. It's broad beans, for example. Yeah. All these potatoes were put, the seed potato went in these sacks of different compost at the same time. And I get so many comments from gardeners who've got this going on and I've, they well, don't know what it is. Pot, uh, okay, there you go. But how do you know where, <coughs> how to source your manure from? You don't. You don't. So you it's don't. potluck, even if you buy, you know, yeah. if you had your manure... So yeah, manure was delivered from local yeah. stables in yeah. the middle of Yeah, and it could even um, have been called it, organic. It, you know. was the, it was the bedding that, you know, the amino paralytic had mm -hmm. bound yeah. to the lignin in the straw that yeah. was used as the bedding. And it takes two years to break down. It's a, do a Dow chemical, mm. and it's the misapplication. Well, it will take longer than that if you leave it in a sack. If you spread it on the ground, sunlight helps to degrade it, and so do soil microbes. But right. in a sack like that, if you pile of manure, can have active weed killer for ten years or more. Wow. I've heard cases of so it's quite lot. You might buy it from mm. a, sure. a, a, yeah. a sort of well-known, legitimate yeah. seller. Yeah, the world's not fair. Not just like, someone, yeah. a friendly farmer who gives it to you. Yeah, sure. You could a lot of people don't even know it's in there. You could ask the farmer even sometimes. They, they can't remember mm -hmm. if they sprayed this stuff. Shift the blame back on me. Oh. That didn't work. No. <laughs> I've got enough experience. And, and I said, you know, you're just, you're just being really bad here. You're, 
you should, you're not acknowledging your problem. Absolutely. Anyway, so I'm on it at the moment. So I suppose the best way to control our Charles would be to <coughs> make your own, because you've got some element, <laughs> even then, Laurel, if, well, you, if you bring in stuff in from other places. Yeah, and that's why I'm interested in woodchip as well, because it yes. shouldn't be in that. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anything that's got hay, it's hay more than straw. Is hay. The, yeah. hay. They spray broadleaf killer on grass to make hay. That's but lawns as well, if, if people even unknowingly are using it. Yeah. And this one is soil. This is doing not badly, but <laughs> you, you know, the difference between soil and compost, obviously. Yeah, so the winner is, at the moment, your own compost. Well, I don't know. It's uh, between that and the mushroom. Mushroom. I did a very similar one in two litre pots for spinach, and actually, this one was was quite a bit stronger than that one but mm -hmm. it varies over time all you're seeing at any one time is a snapshot yeah like this one started very strongly after yeah. four weeks this was the biggest ingredient and then suddenly it went yellow mm. from all the wood in there it's a mushroom compost you get this problem with chemicals in there as well well it can be if they use a bit of horse manure in there so again that if you're unlucky you'll get it a bit mm. this one clearly is okay but this this is a way of doing a trial, you know, if, if you, at least if you get some delivered before you spread it on your garden, not necessarily for Taylor. Yeah. Broad beans are good, so broad beans. I've, I've always this is this is this can be very deceiving though, can't it? Because I've when I grow potatoes, mm. I've had lots with flowers on, then some that hasn't got many flowers on, and it's been a bigger harvest under the ground yeah. on them without flowers than this sure. will. So yeah. Yeah. it can be deceiving the growth coming on the top. Yeah, yeah totally. That's why it would be so fascinating to see the weight. Nine month old compost from one of the bays down there. You can see how it's oh, blacker yeah, than yeah. what I showed you before. It's still really good compost. I think not quite as well. I'm just getting someone doing a biological study of these different composts through a microscope ah. uh, mm. to see what microbes are in there. That's always interesting. Mm. Oh, yeah, awesome. nice. uh, do you see how much we're making? You know, there's a lot of stuff here now. Uh, this is a, we put the dates up here. so. Prior to that, this <coughs> we made compost in there between the 1st of April and the 16th of May. And turned it in there three weeks ago, 10th of June. And this is what we've got. So, again, this compost is not very old. It's three months, mm. two, three months old. Um, and again, you can see quite a bit of wood. That's helping, I think, to keep it nice and crumbly. And, and the temperature on that. Yeah, we're still at 50. It's still wow. pretty warm. Even three weeks after turning it, it's still quite hot. What's the seed temperature then? It's about uh, 50, 55. Yeah. So I can be confident there won't be too much weed seed in here. And is this is this seed being kept from last year? Um, no, no, this is this harvested uh, four weeks ago. Or three weeks. Yeah, so will you keep some of these uh, oh, yeah, sorry, closer yeah. for next year? Like, totally. For... That, all of that nearly could serve for seed garlic. I've been, this is about 30 years now I've been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say this one got? Fantastic. Is that, sorry, rust. Rust, yeah, rust. I'm sure you must have come across rust where yeah. you, the leaves that you can see on some of them still. It's this orange sort of brown spots. Okay. And it turns the leaves quite quickly once it really gets in there from green to orange and then they can't transfer. Uh, yeah, they can't. Yeah, yeah. So then that's. We put that pull, on the compost heap. So you pull them out. Yeah. That and they haven't happen. quite fully grown. Edible, you're still going to dry them? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. totally, totally. And even though I'll, I'll use that for seed sometimes, <coughs> yeah, that's now a seed farm product, it just hasn't got as big as it is. Elephant. Yeah. And this is some of the wood chip I've been mentioning that Adam put through the sieve, uh, four right. millimeter sieve. Yeah. Three year old wood chip. Mm. Um, we've been using that in small amounts in potting. Actually, that was what was in the sack of that potato plant that looked a bit pale. So that's good potting compost? Not on its own. I would say good if you add a bit of homemade compost, a bit of soil, a bit of something more nutritious to it. Mm -hmm. But it's got a nice structure. It helps to keep yeah. air in there. Mm. And I think quite a lot of what's been sold as ready to use potting compost now is no better than that. Because it hasn't got that much nutrition. Exactly. From what I'm hearing. So actually it's good to mix whatever you get if you buy it with your own compost. Well maybe not all though, you, as soon as it comes back to your point you don't really know. <laughs> um, this is the sieve, you can see the bottom of it that we use mm. for the final stage. This is part of a wormery. Mm. That's right, that's the uh, 
Oh, what do you call it? Where do we sit? Actually, no. there's some good um, sitting crates you can get. Uh, one line with the wormery.co.uk. Wormery.co.uk. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is here. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll put the worm in. Do you see the temperature down there? The thermometer. Yeah. Hot. Yeah. But that's only just. If you look at the date, this heat started only six days ago. And it's only just got up to our normal running temperature of about 60 degrees. It took a while. But this is how much material we've generated in six days or found. Browns, whatever it might be. Super. So there was a lovely time last week when my neighbour was cutting grass along the ditch out there and he brought me about four wheelbarrow loads of grass and with a bit of soil in front. Mm. Yeah, straight on. Yeah. And he was delighted to get rid of it. Make a lot of friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's lovely. So, That's yeah, you can see here that... Because the heat. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah, just got going. Can I yeah. smell? It yeah. smells lovely, isn't it? Lovely. Sweet. It's slightly garlicky. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of rusty garlic leaves. Yeah, it's just nice. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't, that it gets killed, the rust. Yeah, in my book, I mean, some people say, well, if I'm in any diet, I'll put it in. I mean, if you, you could end up losing sleep over this, and also mm -hmm. a lot of time wasting, mm -hmm. sorting things out, do I put yeah, this in or not? Yeah, just throw it all in. And one other thing I'll do when a heap is quite new, it's just walk on it a bit. <laughs> this helps to get the heat going because the compost process won't work so well if you've got very large gaps of air. Mm. Mm -hmm. You need fair maidens, maidens to do that. <laughs> fair maidens. maidens. <laughs> just like the winery. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. The great. Yeah. Especially at the side. You see how much I'm seeing yes. there? Mm. It's always the sides that you want to pay attention to. And then you can push the middle a bit to the side just to... Um, make sure it stays level because that, that helps with building heat you know you get your layers more easily that way that's a real blessing you've got to... yeah. is there an optimum size that you need to generate the heat you know it's a very good question yeah. uh, well, i would say those pallet heats are close to minimum size about a meter a meter square okay. roughly yeah. mine are about that wide <laughs> and i never seem to get the, the sort of that's heat. right yeah they, they wouldn't get that kind of heat yeah, it's a kind of core heat in, yeah. in a sufficient volume. Mm -hmm. okay. But you could if you filled your heat with in a, in a week. Yeah. But you would be very unlikely. Yeah. <laughs> Is that why the um, uh, black black bins don't get the top? Exactly. That's what I've got. Like a yeah. volume, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We could just quickly have a look at one on the way past. Yeah. Now we're going to go up and Do you put blight, blighted potatoes on the compost heat, Charles, as well? Totally, yeah. 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 yeah I never get all blight we put on. No problem yeah. at all. So yeah, so this is um you can see more clearly in here actually the different layers. Like yeah. you know, there's our brown layer of soil and mm. wood chips. And this one you've got a bit of soil there, but it's not getting very hot. Yeah. But I think we'll still get some nice compost. It'll just take longer. Just take longer. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, what I normally do with these is um, when they're full, which will be, we'll stop filling it soon and then leave it maybe two or three months and then just lift off the whole thing, put it down there, and then you can just put the undecomposed stuff that's Come on back top. in. Yeah, in the bottom, and then you can use what's on the bottom. That's mm. much easier than using these doors, actually. Mm. Yeah, Not really, really well. uh, a good design. Yeah. <laughs> design. Yeah. Yeah. Just to give you an idea, Adam just spent about half an hour um, removing bindweed from the, these cabbage. They went in after leeks, and beyond them is some broad beans we planted five days ago. After sorry, some beetroot we planted five days ago after broad beans. Mm. And the further beetroot went in in March, but that was the first planting. So yeah, with bindweed, it's a continual process here because there's quite a bit, and also these dandelions. There's a lot of them from the seeds that blow in. Yeah. That's our two main weeds. Oh, and how old is this, gar this garden, part of the garden, is it, Charles? It's about 15 months now. See, it's, it's fantastic, isn't it? This is a year and a bit, and it was like that. Yep. Last February, March. 
So that'll become less and less as you as you keep yeah, yeah, totally. ca the mother root and I would say it's less this summer than it was the summer before. Yeah, yeah. Last year it was really <laughs> strong. Uh, compost on the weeds and plastic on top. So this is another way to kill the uh, you know what's growing while you're growing something. So it's butternut squash. Butterfly. Hey, crown print. This crown print squash we're gonna eat to lunch some of last year's harvest. So again that's nearly 10 months old. Fantastic. Stored food. When food is grown properly it stores much more easily. And there's a cheeky curry squash which is quicker at the end. <coughs> And this is why I'm using the plastic here. Yeah. Mm. This is one reason anyway. You can see there's a lot of, lot of bindweed trying to grow under there. Yeah. And the plastic is saving us a lot of time. Maybe would you would, would you take the leaves off some of these as well, Charles? Because there's one leaf on that one there. There's like really it's gone it's, really pale. Yeah, is, it, is, is that the variety? It's a cheeky curry, it does that quite often. Right. It's not bothering me actually. That's not so much a red leaf, it's more natural variegation. Okay. Leaf. It's worrying when you see it because I don't know. Yeah. Shuffle down a bit more at that end if you if you would. Alright. Oh I see, yeah. Yeah, not brilliant. Uh, well, some gold, particularly susceptible, it's from day and night temperature difference. Oh. In other words, it gets cool in here at night. It gets as easily as cool as outside. You know, I keep an eye on the temperature at 10 outside, 10 in here at this time of year. And then by day, obviously, it goes up to 35 maybe, so tomatoes find that a bit stressful. It's not that they're short of moisture, mm. it's just something they do. Because yeah. they're not doing it in the greenhouse. Oh, <laughs> I think it's slightly warmer by now, yeah, and the ventilation's a bit better. So here, you obviously got nothing at the top. You just, we've just got doors at either end. Does it impact on the crop? Mm. Yeah, a little bit. It reduces photosynthesis. Mm. And again, there's white fly. So you can see, you know, maybe that's all related to plants under a bit of stress. It's very well made. He's a very conscientious guy. Thanks. Thanks. That was five, was it? She said. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's what it looks like. We see that's composted bark, which has then gone through worms. Okay. Oh. So yeah, he's really they're doing. He's incorporating with the man who owns Yorkshire Worms. They've got huge hangers full of worms, <laughs> worm trays. And no, no. And is, and is that why you were doing that on your wormery, Charles? Because you were adding, you were yeah. adding like that type of organic. Well, I'm doing it slightly different. Yeah, I'm not feeding my compost through worms, although it might. Have. Be worm cut in yeah, my compost. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's so many ways of doing it. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So would but, you just mix a bit of that with some for extra nutrients? Or... Uh, yeah, I would say it needs something. That's my feeling. But it, it, it wasn't bad. Okay. It wasn't bad. It, re it grew some nice lettuce plants. You, We've planted mm, them already. When you buy something for eleven pound, you've got to add something to it. Don't sure. You? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you Thing sure is, you though, can't be so you're bulking it. Well, I, he's looking at it. You know, I've been sending him photographs of growth and. It, what this is all about though, so interesting that these guys, they get expensive lab test stuff so they can get a profile of all the nutrients in their compost. They still can't be sure the plants are going to grow how they want. No. Yeah. And that's it's why like they that. send them to me, because, you know, I can do a growing test and they, they'll trust it. And yeah. that's that's the bit they should all be doing. Yeah, yeah. And all on gold is 20 quid, a, 20 pound a bag. So, it yeah, can be retail. Really if, you buy, if you can buy half a pallet, if you got together with enough people, it could be as little as 10. Mm. So it's worth looking at.